college boys can get at me if I say this, but there were like exact questions from Blue Book that were in the SAT. When it came up in the SAT, I was like, kind of like, I know the answer to this one. I've seen it before. I'm Fiona, and I just graduated with my bachelor's, and I'm doing my. I did the SAT, so I could apply for a master's. I did appear for the SAT in the paper based a few years ago, and also the digital SAT recently. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about how was your experience right off the bat. Like, what was the biggest difference that you found between paper based and digital SAT? Um, so in the in the paper based one, I feel like it was a little bit more stressful because. It was on one of those scantron sheets where if you made a mistake on which line you filled in the bubble, you would mess up the rest of your questions. So that was like even when I did test prep back then, that was one of the big things that everyone would talk about. Where you will have to make sure that you're on the same line every single time. You have to make sure that you fill the right bubble. You have to make sure you don't do twice two bubbles in the same line. Um, so that was it, it. Was easier and also it was easier to go back to a question this time because you could just flag it while before you would have to like go through the paper and then look for it on the scantron scene make sure you didn't accidentally skip it or accidentally fill it in when you wanted to skip it since you mentioned all the devices can you tell tell us a little bit about uh, which device you had with you what was uh, the devices that were if you didn't have any then what are centers providing the devices and what were the kind of devices they were providing so i took my own laptop mine was a dell laptop and i don't think you could take in tablets but you could take ipads Chromebooks or laptops, and if you didn't have one, you would have to request one in advance from College Board. Uh, but they said that even if you did request it, there was one like it wasn't hundred percent chance that they would give it to you because it's usually hosted in schools. I'm pretty sure that the schools would have an option for you. The day that I took the SAT, there was an issue with the iPads. So if anybody had an iPad, they would have to use another device because Blue Book wouldn't open on it. So that was that wasn't an issue that could happen before, where your whole test could get jeopardized just because you got the wrong device but, but now it is so yeah that's interesting on one hand it reduces the stress of uh, having to write on the yeah. paper but on the other hand uh, you do need to keep your devices charged before the day of the test uh, fully prepared and then make sure that uh, basically the luck is with you and there are no issues that are going on did the testing center have the extra devices for for the yeah, for any of these people who their devices failed to actually do blue book properly with my testing center there was only one person who had an ipad i think they could provide them with a with a laptop but the thing was that they didn't inform anybody beforehand like we showed up to the testing center and we were about to go into the testing room and then they said if anybody has an ipad there's an issue with blue book so i feel like they maybe should have told people before and uh, like so that people could have got multiple options. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I think testing centers can do a better job and they will. They are also learning, I think, as they go. And I hope that the kinks will be worked out before like March. Yeah. So Munira, you were going to ask something. Yeah. Um, was there enough time per question you felt while you were taking the digital SAT? Uh, the time was definitely shorter. I'm not sure if that's because it was on a device and not a paper, but the time definitely felt shorter and you could see the time ticking down. So that was also a little bit stressful. But I think with for me personally, with the English section, it was enough time. But with the math section, I'm not very good at math. So I was like panicking near the end of it. But I think in, in general, I saw a lot of people finish their tests or were sitting around waiting for the module time to be over. Uh, so I think it was enough time for okay. most people. The timer is stressing some of us out. It's best to look at the test in terms of milestones. So when you finish around one third of, of the test, let's say for English, reading and writing, around nine questions, you can just check the timer and see whether you know you have to increase your pace a little bit or something. Did, did you find that the strategy that you used for the paper-based and the digital were significantly different as such? So for the paper-based, my strategy was to just do as many questions as I could. And then if I find a question that I'm not good at, I would usually skip it and I wouldn't come back to it. And usually I would miss a lot of questions like that. So I would just either guess in the first try or I would flip back all the way. But this time it was easier for me to mark questions. So if I wasn't sure initially, like in the first few seconds, I would mark it and I would come back to it later just to make sure that I had time for the questions that I was actually really sure about. Let's get into a little bit of the logic discussions so how, how were the breaks like scheduled breaks and scheduled breaks how, how did they work and how many breaks you had if you had to get up 
for some reason in between the exam how did that work so this time they had a different feature called unscheduled breaks where you could just take a break so you could take unscheduled breaks but the timer for each module would still keep running so if you had 10 minutes left and you took an unscheduled break for three minutes you'd have seven minutes left and the only time that i took it was after i finished the whole module and i had to wait until the timer went down to go to the next module i would take an unscheduled break to go to the bathroom and it, I, I think that was really helpful because you, you won't have to panic if you really need to use the washroom or if you really need to get like water or something you won't have to wait like an hour until the actual break but the scheduled breaks were like usual where you would have module one module two and then you would have a regular break and then you have math module one math module two. how long was the schedule break i think 10 15 minutes and i remember i was waiting during after my second english module waiting for the timer to go down because that's what you usually do in the paper based you have to wait until the whole time is up so everybody leaves at the same time but the moder- like the instructor had said that if you finish your module two before time, you could have like a longer break. So I had uh, like I had ten minutes extra on my break. So what was the blue book interface to the actual uh, digital SAT that you took? It was the exact same, with the timer and everything on the top and the question on this side and the option on this side. It was the exact same. I don't think if you actually properly wanted to prepare for the SAT, I don't think blue book would be enough by itself because. There are only four practice tests and there's only so many times you can do those over and over, especially if you try to get both modules. Like, it's not really sustainable, I guess, just doing those four over and over. So you would have to definitely find outside sources. Yeah, that's a good point. There are not a lot of digital SAT adaptive full length tests out there. Prepto is going to come up with free full length practice tests which is going to be available to the students in the month of January. So I think that will be a great resource for anyone who wants a proper prediction and a, go through a proper experience of adaptive test uh, in addition to what they already have with Blue Book. Planning to give actionable analytics to students regarding which are the sections they should uh, basically be preparing more. And that actionable analytics, I think, include not only the students' performance, but also the experiences that we have with the real digital exam based on like how many questions we get of the probability statistics area and how much more more preparation you need in each of this area and i think those actionable analytics will be very useful for students to get the right set the right direction for their preparation one of the most awaited questions that i think everyone is asking is that module two right module two is supposed to be a little more difficult if you do very well in module one right so what what were you thinking, Fiona? During were you trying to guess whether you have got a difficult module two in math or English, and uh, did you find module two much harder than what you had generally in the paper based test? Was module two much harder? So with the English section, I think I did get the harder module, uh, mostly because I didn't find that it was easier in the second half, which is usually what will happen if it is the Easter module. Uh, by the time I had gone through the whole math section, I was like, please just give me like something I know how to do. And then in the second module, the first question was so easy. It was like, find 50% of 400 or something. And I was like, I know how to do this one. So I wasn't even complaining about the, the fact that I got the second, like the easier module. Yeah. I was like, at least I can do something. I think we have one of these videos from Munira on what should be the strategy on tackling the digital exam. We have actually tried a lot of blue book tests uh, and done a lot of like trial errors in order to come up with this strategy where basically the module one determines your base score range from 200 to 600. And then module two will be deciding how much on top of that you can actually gain. So the best strategy for anyone would be to do their best in module one. Should we be a little cautious about overly marking questions for review? So in English, generally, if you're left with two options, as I always say, uh, find something wrong in one of the options. Never just focus on this option looks right, right? It's about finding. And once you mark off in English, I think you should forget it. Uh, Review usually is for math and perhaps in quantitative evidence questions where you feel that doing something is going to take some time and I don't want to put in that time right now. So let me do an easier question, which takes less time first and come back to this time consuming question later. So let time be the only criteria which makes you mark a question for review and not how you feel about the answer. The, so there's there's two things that happen when you go to the end page where you can review your things. 
it, it, there's three, uh, you can like have an overview of all the questions and there's three things that happen. So each question is in a box. And if the box is filled, that means that you answer the question. If the box is empty, that means you skip the question and you didn't mark it for review. And then there's another option where there's a little flag on each uh, thing that you mark for review. So what I did was if I did not, if I wanted to check my answer again, I would mark that for review. But if I wanted to go back to that, if I had time, I wouldn't mark it for review, but I wouldn't answer it either. So at the end, I could see which ones I needed, like which ones I needed to actually complete because they'd just be completely blank. While the other, like if I had time, that one would have a little flag. So once I finished all of the questions that were blank and all of them were filled, then I could go back to the ones that had a flag. Did you bring one more calculator? And if you didn't, did you think you should have? I didn't bring a calculator because I went in on Blue Book. I just used the calculator that was provided. And it was fine for me, but everybody else had got one. And uh, the instructor had asked me, like during the math when the math section started, like everybody take out your calculators now or something. And I didn't. And she was genuinely like confused, like you don't have a calculator. And I was like, no, I'll just use the one. And she was like concerned for me because like, oh, why don't you have a calculator? But everybody else had one. And I think I should have gotten one because simply for the fact that it was like faster to type in the, the numbers for and, and like the whatever I was doing, because on laptop, you would have to either use your mouse pad or your mouse to type in on the screen, or you would have to use like your keys, where I think like if I had gotten the calculator, it would have been way faster. This is an excellent uh, time to talk about how uh, you should carry your calculator and use your calculator for numeric calculations and use the blue book calculator for graphing. Did you find any particular section in the reading and writing very difficult? Um, not particularly too hard, but the critical reasoning section, the questions were sometimes phrased kind of tricky on purpose. Uh, and even like the grammar section, like sometimes, like, like you mentioned, you shouldn't go by what looks right, but like that's, how I was going by it and the grammar section, I would sometimes get confused. Why is it a like a hyphen instead of a, like a semicolon or something? But yeah, those were the only two that really like make me stop instead of like having my flow. But nothing was too difficult, I think. Makes sense. And did you find the math section easier than what you had in paper based? Because I, I know that in paper based, there was a one no calculator section and with the digital SAT both the sections have calculator and you have a extra few seconds per question. I found the digital part, the, the, the digital test like easier, I think, because especially because the calculator was on both sections and also the I think the questions themselves were less they, they required like a little bit less working out, especially in, I think in the first module. I don't know if that is just something that I'm making up or if that's an actual thing. But um, I felt like I had to write down less and I could do more just looking at the question than when I think in the paper based one, I would have to like sort of solve it manually every question. Yeah, I think you must have looked at some of the prep tips and tips from that. <laughs> you always recommend looking at the option, going through the option elimination and looking at many mm -hmm. questions. I think most of the questions that Munira solves is just by staring at the question and <laughs> having to do a lot of work in the ordinary way. So definitely you should check out this Prepto Tips and Tricks. We have a walkthrough of all the college board papers uh, coming up in Prepto. Coming back to the most uh, awaited last question, how many questions that you saw were like Blue Book? I think there were a few questions that used the same outline but had different numbers or different like specifics because especially in the English section, I remember they were talking about, the, there's a blue book question talking about like a scientist and, uh, and and there's another blue book question talking about uh, like archeologists or something. And in the, in, in the actual SAT, there were two questions talking about the same studies that like the same uh, passage, I guess, that the scientists were talking about and the same like archeology span thing, but they have, they asked different questions. That's great to hear. And what about the rest of the questions? Did they seem pretty similar to what people see in the Blue Book practice test currently? Yeah, like I said, like the they were really similar. And even the ones that weren't related to the Blue Book questions, the sort of like, I guess, like the vibe of the question was the same. Makes sense. Makes sense. 
so do you um, do you want to tell students like what was the kind of breakdown for the math question most of them especially in the first module were optional they they were only on two to three like short answer questions makes sense and then when you said that most of the questions are optional you mean that most of the question did have options and then there were a very few uh, without looking at any options and calculate an answer those were very few right yeah those were only like i think only around two to three of them the the rest were like pick an option so at this point we would like to like students know that if you did very well in module 1 in math you might see in module 2 that you get a lot of fill in the blank questions rather than multi choice optional option based questions the algorithm is made to basically make you do your best and the adaptiveness is not something to be afraid of at all the adaptiveness is actually what allows you to make it two hour test rather than a three hour test so overall i think this change is in the positive direction what what do you guys feel yeah i agree i think overall uh, reducing the total number of time reducing the length of each question uh, can only help students so the focus is on their understanding not on how much attention they are paying right which is Uh, it's definitely some direction yeah definitely i think you know it was great hearing directly from a person who has experienced this and since you have been both the types of test what is your opinion on whether this uh, digital sat is a step in the positive direction for students i uh, yeah i think the digital sat is better because especially because it's adaptive before you would have to wait for a really long time to get the your results and then when you got your result it would be like oh uh, now i need to register for the next one and i only have x amount of time to improve my score from this to this because you don't even know your score until like a few months later yes uh, but now you get your score really quick but i've definitely heard that it is much faster as compared mm-hmm. to the paper based sat yeah feel a good luck for your admission and uh, your uh, university search and uh, stay tuned with prepto stay tuned subscribe see you all soon Coming up at Prepto, we have more walkthroughs of College Board's practice tests and questions in the Prepto way, and a self-paced digital SAT course that includes a free adaptive diagnostic test and a free first session. So don't forget to sign up with the link in the description. Hey Prepters, thank you so much for watching our video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video again. Here's a video that we think you might like, and click here for the full walkthrough playlist so you can prepare for the SAT the Prepto way.